Ahoy my friends, Ryder here and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today I am going to be showing you guys a clear of the Crash co-op mode. I did this fight basically all day today with j and Omega Weapon. So thank you guys so much for having the patience and the tenacity to see it out through to the very end. This is a very interesting fight. And I'm going to be showing you guys a voiceover of the recording of the fight. However, unfortunately, I had to cut the audio because when I recorded it, it recorded all of our voices into it. So I'm going to be laying over some epic boss battle Final Fantasy VII music for you guys. And I'll be talking about the fight as we go through it. That being said, I'm going to talk a little bit about the fight itself for you. For those of you out there that's trying to get carried through this fight and what you really need to know going into it. All right, so let's go over here to the to the stage right here. I'm going to show you guys the character that I ran, and then I'll show you guys a little bit of the team that j and Omega Weapon ran as well, and talk a little bit about, you know, what team you might be able to make. However, honestly, there's so many mechanics that go into this fight that it really depends on who is carrying you. So depending on what weapons they have, can drastically change the setup that's required from the third person in this fight. Unlike a Shiva fight or an Ifrit or even a Bahamut fight, we are fighting three different individual bosses. They all have individual weaknesses. They all have individual traits about them. And in order to properly do this fight, you have to have at least a uh, foundational level of understanding about them. So I'm going to try and explain how this fight works. I will say that this fight is significantly harder than the EX3, however, there are definitely ways to beat it. Alright, so going into this fight, we are going to take out Reno first. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to be running... Okay, so I'll talk about the team really quick here. We're going to be running a Cloud Strife, alright, with a OB10 Stream Saber slash OB10 Sky Splitter. So this is just one variation of a build that someone who's pretty strong can use to carry. So it's going to be an ice slash fire hybrid. And I'll show you guys the full team, at least on the front end of the build, right before the guide and a little bit here so that you guys can see what j and Omega were running. But essentially Omega was running Cloud with the OB10 Stream Saber, the Limit Break Draw Arcanum, Shiva, and the Sky Splitter right there. J Row was right or er, J Row was running a OB10 Centipede on Matt, along with the Slick Beetle to take care of the pretty drastic physical attack down that will often go off. Um, and then he was also running the Crimson Flare so that we could boost up the Ifrit that I have currently equipped here on Aerith. So with Cloud, we were covering Ice and Fire. And with Aerith, I was running the Prism Rod along with the Wind Arcanum set right here and the Floral Rod. The Floral Rod is nice because it also breaks physical defense along with doing a Wind Imperil for when you're fighting Rude in the second part of the fight. All right, so we brought in Matt, Cloud, and Aerith for our three. Now let's go over and look at the actual enemies right here. So when we start the fight, essentially we're going to be taking out Reno first. He's the easiest to take out, and it for us it worked better to take out Reno first, although I've seen battles where they take them out kind of at the same time. I've seen battles where they take out Rude first. For us, I think it's the simplest, easiest way to take out Reno first. So essentially you're trying to do that before they get off their second major group attack. So if you're able to kill Reno before he does that, it's going to prevent him from healing himself. So that's the goal. And I'll show you guys in the fight when we're trying to take him out. Once you take out Reno, you're going to go over to Rude right here. Now Rude is a little bit tricky. He has a couple different aspects of the fight that concern him that are good to know for anyone that's trying to get into this fight. One, he is immune to physical attack, magic attack down. Now we were not using any 
Kuja's Spirit Blade, or weapons focused on breaking attack or magic attack throughout this fight. We had the Centipede, so we used that to raise the AoE physical defense of the team. And apart from that, j was like basically playing full-time healer in this fight, along with using the bio materia to keep people poisoned, along with raising Omega's physical attack whenever that got debuffed so that he could keep up the DPS. Now, Rude shortly into this fight is going to have an Aegis break, where essentially he provokes your team, you can only attack him, and the goal during this point in time, because you have a small window here where you need to break his wind bar. So if you're able to break his wind bar here, you're, he's going to stun him. It's going to stun him for a certain period of time, which is going to allow you to get an extra amount of damage in, which is going to let you kill Rude later on before he can actually get off the haymaker in the fight. But essentially, you can... If you don't kill him before the Haymaker, it's still possible to beat him. But once he does that Tri Shockwave, essentially the fight is a bust. You need to kill him before he gets off the Tri Shockwave at the very least. Because Elena will follow up very closely behind it with another AoE. And it's impossible to heal in between that gap. However, if you break the Wind Bar during the Aegis phase, you get the extra damage there that's going to help you get to that point in time. Now, Rude is going to have two different sigil breaks here. Now, and also something interesting that we found about Rude is that he can have a magic sigil counter or a physical sigil counter. It changes depending on the fight. Now, you know, the last like eight to ten fights we did, it was a magic counter every single time. Um, so I'm not sure how, what it is that kind of dictates what his counter is going to be but in order to counter that we were essentially running an x sigil magic and physical sigil break on two of the three characters so two of the three were running both and then one of the three was running one right and so that way as long as you're prepared for his sigil break you can take it down in time um it can be really tricky because he'll hit you with the Haymaker counter basically uh, very often if you use the magic or physical that he's currently countering against. So that's going to be his first sigil break. It's a 23 slot X sigil break. His second sigil break is going to be a diamond sigil break. It's going to have four, um, I don't know what you would call them. It's a four count sigil break. And as long as you know it's coming, it's pretty easy to take care of. It's not too fast counting. You don't need a diamond sigil break weapon. You just need to know when they're coming. And the time to know when the first one is coming is he'll push up his glasses and then you'll know that it's coming shortly after that. So you just save ATB and you down it as soon as it happens. All right. So by the time you kill Rude, basically the entire time you're fighting Rude, Elena is going to be in this defense stance right now she has two stances attack style and defense style during defense style her physical defense and magic defense are greatly increased and it's very hard to do damage against her however once rude dies she's going to switch into attack style and once she does that even if she's at full hp you can still take her down before she starts taking out people one at a time it is a dps check on elena at the end where if you don't kill her fast enough, she will start one-shotting your players. However, we're going to bring Crimson Flare, Hellfire. Um, we're going to have Bio in there. We're going to have the Slick Beetle to raise up Cloud's physical attack and an OB-10 Sky Splitter. And that's how we're going to be able to beat Elena, even when she's at full HP, um, basically when she's the only person left going into that fight. All right, guys, now to go into my build for Aerith, if you guys can build this version of Aerith, for sure you can get carried um, in our Discord server. However, if you can't build this version of Aerith with Wind, there can be other options. I'm going to tell you guys right now, on Sunday, around the time of reset, so 2 p.m. Pacific time, uh, me, j -Row, and Omega are going to get on the Discord, and we're going to try and help carry people through clears. In the meantime, if you guys are looking to get cleared and you go down here to the Discord channel, 
you guys can go over to one of the main discords right here they have a much bigger um group i can't exactly i'll show you guys the links to join these bigger discords in the video and if you join these discords you can find like dedicated carry groups that will bring you guys through these uh these crash co-ops which can be a little bit handy, I will say. However, for those of you guys that want to try and run it with us, um, Sunday, 2 p.m., when the game resets, we're all going to be on, and we're all going to be trying to help people get clears, all right? So hopefully we'll see you guys then. Going into my build, this is going to be Aerith right here, and she's going to be essentially a wind DPS character in this fight. She is running the wind arcanum right here, Ifrit in the main slot. We have the prism rod at OB7. So as long as you have it at OB6, I think that you could get this fight done. And then the Floral Rod right here, which as I said, is a Wind Imperil plus a Physical Defense Break. In my first slot, I have Akira for just backup heals whenever j -Row needed it. In my second slot, like I said, I have a Physical X Sigil Blow and then a Magical X Sigil Blow. Like I said, two of the three characters are going to be running both like this. And then one of the three is going to be running one of them. And then in place of it is going to have a bio materia. So at least one person in the team is going to be running bio. In the sub weapons, I am running the Hellhouse Caller right here for the HP physical defense, the Apocalypse for the attack and wind potency right here, and also the Sun Umbrella for the magic attack, magic ability potency. Her stats are going to be 10.4k HP, 3.1k magic attack, 127 physical defense, and 91k power. Her R abilities are as shown here, focused on HP, magic attack, uh, physical defense, wind potency right here, and a little bit of magic ability potency right there. So you guys can check out the build for yourself. Um, and yeah, that's going to basically conclude my build for Aerith. Of course, if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord and you wanna come check this out and try to get some clears, check the description of this video or any of the videos that i make the discord is called the curseborn we'd love to have you guys come and join us all right so from here i'm going to go over and we're going to check out j row and omega's build and then i'm going to get into the voiceover of the actual crash itself all right guys so here we are this is the team that we ran in order to take down the crash co-op fight against the turks right here so i'm just going to quickly go over it i already showed you guys my build with Aerith right here but i'm going to show you guys one way that two of the carries can carry one of the players um ideally ideally i have seen builds with a you know full magic ice potency sephiroth running alongside an Aerith with the OB-10 Easter Staff. However, I don't know a single player that has the OB-10 Prism Rod and the OB-10 Easter Staff, so it might be a little bit tricky. Now, for us, like I said, Omega over here is going to be running Cloud with the Ice Arcanum costume, Shiva as the summon. We have two. We have an X-Sigil Physical Break right here, an X-Sigil Magical Break, and an aurora blow so this is going to be really important going into this fight to bring the auroras in order to break uh rude's agus which is like his provoke uh phase all right we also have the ob10 stream saber right here and the ob10 sky splitter now as for matt over here he is going to be running his gear voucher costume which is a healing costume i didn't even realize that matt had one Along with the Crimson Flare right here, uh, we do have the Centipede right here at OB10. Now, I know that if you do have a Centipede at OB6, I do think that this role could be playable by a different character and have one of the other carries be like a DPS. So, you know, you could run this Aerith build. If you have an OB6 Centipede, you could do that too. Uh, but you want to have it at OB6 because then it can hit the, uh, the high tier uh, physical defense buff all right so we're gonna have the centipede here in the main slot we have the slick beetle right here which can raise the physical attack of an ally and during this fight um, certain characters are going to get their physical attack greatly debuffed since i'm running a magic character it doesn't matter if it happens to me however for cloud it's very important that when that physical attack comes up j -Row is going to be uh rebuffing that physical attack back into the blue now as for matt's uh, materia right here 
we are going to have one physical sigil break right here for X, a bio in place of the magic X sigil, and then a Cura right here for single target cures. And that's going to essentially be the gist of this team. Uh, everyone is running at least 130, 140 physical defense in the back end. I believe that Omega is running a OB-10 Bald Eagle and then the uh, OB-9 Glen Axe that has HP and fire potency on it, along with any other event weapon that has HP and physical defense. For Matt, I'm sure he's just running uh, something to raise the healing, something to raise HP and physical defense, something like that, a healing slash tankier build. All right, guys, so that is going to basically conclude the team build for the fight. I've been going over this for a little while. That being said, let's get into the voiceover of the crash, and I hope it doesn't bother you guys that we don't have the actual sound from the fight, but I am going to put in the Final Fantasy VII boss music and do a voiceover for you guys to check out. So... I hope you guys enjoy, and a special thank you to j Row and Omega Weapon. Alright guys, so here we are heading into the fight against the Turks right here. I'm going to be kind of walking you guys what to do in this fight. At the very beginning with Aerith, I am going to use Floral Flare on Reno just to get that physical defense down, but you're going to very quickly switch over to the defense stance to block Elena's first grenade. Any of you guys who have done this fight so far knows how the fight starts out like that in the beginning. All right, after that, we are going to be focusing Reno and primarily Reno to kill him before a certain point in time that I will point out. I will be focusing on damage. Omega is going to be doing Cloud's ice attacks. j Row will be keeping our physical defense high while also trying to get poisons off on Reno here and there when he has extra ATB. For me, I'm just going to keep Reno debuff on the physical defense down while also doing the main wind attack in my arsenal right here. This is going to be the first duo attack between Reno and Elena. It's going to be cross combat and flash strike. Just so you know, Elena's is a little bit quicker, so just keep an eye on hers just to switch over to the defense stance. Once hers goes off, it's going to do, they're going to choose one person. For us, it was always J Row, so potentially whoever has the highest healing stat. All right, they're both going to hit them. And then immediately after that, we're just going to switch back and we're going to go focus on the DPS here on Reno. After that, we're going to go into a triple X sigil break. The way that we handled this, guys, was whoever was in front of you. So, for example, Omega's all the way in the left. He took Rude. j Row was in the middle. He took Elena. And Reno was on the right. So I took out Reno. I let the bar go to the very end just for that for we could get extra ATB, right? And then we broke it, and now we're moving on to killing Reno right here. All right, so there we go. We're going to take down Reno, and we're going to get off. I'm going to get off one more physical debuff right here. This is the point in time where you want to kill Reno before the Turks' bloodlust attack. All right, so I'm going to get off one more attack, and then we're going to drop Shiva in Hellfire, take Reno out of the fight, and then it's one down, two to go. All right, so here's going to be Shiva right here. As you guys can see, Reno is the easiest part of the fight, especially with a really strong cloud with a stream saber. After that, I'm going to cast Floral Flare on Rude just in time for us to block his Turks Brawl right here. So by killing Reno, it changes the attack from Turks Bloodlust into Turks Brawl, which makes it less damaging. After this, Elena is going to fully heal Reno. I'm going to get off just one uh, Imperil attack and then we're going to do everything we can to break his wind bar right now. You want to break this wind bar in order to give you a little bit more of a window in order to kill Rude in time before he does the Haymaker or the triple shockwave later on in the fight. All right, so we just broke it right before he was about to go into his sigils right here, but instead he's going to get stunned, as you guys will see right here in a second. All right, guard shattered. Boom. Rude is down for the count. He's still going to go into that sigil break, guys. However, we are going to have a great little window to do extra damage to him right here. So it's crucial that if you're using this strategy, you take out Rude's Aegis with wind damage before he goes into his sigil break. All right, here we go. Now he's going to go into counter style. As you can see, this is a magic counter. So I called out in the fight physical, and now everyone's going to use physical counters. 
we're going to easily take this down, guys. That's why we have two people running both types because it can change. It 100% can change from physical to magic, which is kind of a pain. All right, we are going to barely get that off right there, guys. All right, I'm going to switch straight back into the Floral Flare, which is the Wind Imperil physical defense down. And now we're just going straight back into damage. For me, running Aerith, and for anyone who's trying to run this build, essentially I'm just casting Floral Flare once, making sure the physical defense is up for Cloud, but also the Wind Imperil. Something I have to keep my eye on in this fight is the Wind Imperil will not trigger unless Aerith's HP is above 50%. So that's something you guys always want to keep your eyes on. Right here, j -Row always initiates the attack because he had the Crimson Flare, which raises Ifrit's damage. And then we also drop Sh Shiva as well. And now Root is below 50% HP. As you guys can see, we're doing really good so far in this fight. Here comes the second Turks' Brawl. All right, j -Row's just going to prepare us for that with the physical defense up. I'm just going to keep on debuffing, keep on attacking, and Cloud is basically doing the exact same thing right here. If you're at this point right now during this Turks Brawl with Root in the red, you're in great standing. Alright, so here comes the next big attack. Alright, after this we're just going to heal up and we are going to proceed to take down Rood. Alright, as you can see, getting that poison on him will give you extra damage throughout the course of the fight. This is the Diamond Sigil Break right here, which comes right after the uh, Turk's Brutal Attack right there. And we also barely clear this one as well, but it is only four Diamond Sigils. You just have to be prepared for it. All right, so after this, we are gonna take down Rude. Once Rude is down, that's two down, one to go. Moving on to Elena, as you can see, she's gonna high potion herself. So full HP bar, guys. So we're not worrying about taking down Elena's HP at all. All right, once she goes into attack style, that is when we're going to start doing damage to her. All right, she cannot be uh, physical defense or magic defense broken. So I'm just going to focus on doing damage, backup healing when I need to, making sure j is going to make sure that our physical defense is up for the entire team. And Cloud is just going to be spamming Blazing Strike over and over again in order to get her down. All right, so as you guys can see right here, we're gonna try and get J-Row's Crimson Flare Limit Break up, but it's pro it's not it's gonna just barely not make it at the end, but either way, we're still gonna get the win. All right, so here we go. She's gonna be focused on me. Sometimes you do have to do a little bit of off healing, so you guys will see uh, later on in this fight against Elena that I will be doing some off healing. Um, all right, I think I'm just gonna be focusing on damage still right here. J-Row's gonna get off this next physical defense up. All right, and I am going to get a heal off of myself right here just because I'm a little low and she's single targeting me. As you guys can see, if I didn't get that off, I would have died right there. All right, so it is okay to step back away from the damage, especially if you're not the fire DPS on Elena. Right now, Omega is the one that is bringing down Elena. He is the main DPS in the team, and it's crucial that he continues to attack at this part of the fight. All right. Based on how far this fight goes, as you can see, she just got a major five tier physical attack buff up. Now she's gonna start killing people in one hit. All right, so from this point on, we're trying to get Jero summon bar up, but it's really close for getting off right here. All right, so we are gonna initiate our summons right now, and we are going to take down Elena and get the win of this fight. Honestly, guys, we spent the whole day doing this fight it's really fun um i know that there's some of you guys out there don't like losing at stuff and i can feel that i can sympathize with that personally you know i enjoy something that is difficult and that i lose over and over to and so to me this was a really fun day and i think that beating this crash even if it's something that's giving you a lot of trouble is worth kind of persevering and clearing in the long run i think that overall it's going to be you know it's it's just great for the body and the mind and the spirit to do things that are difficult for us and to over to accomplish those things so like i said guys um, i am going to put invite links to both of the official discords for any of you guys that want to join those and look for crash co-op clears um, other than that if you guys want to come join us on sunday 2 p.m pacific standard time we are going to be trying to clear you guys through this crash uh, so 
You know, essentially, if you can build Matt OB6 with the Centipede or Aerith OB6 with the Prism Rod, um, or maybe if uh, Chaos43 comes and joins us, which would be pretty cool, you should come, man, that'd be fun. Um, then we can have a little bit more uh, versatility in the builds and maybe run other kinds of players that have different kinds of things. That being said, it was really fun. I hope you guys enjoy this crash battle and I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and you better understand what it is that you're going to need to bring into this fight and know about the Turks in order to ultimately take them down at the end of the day. All right, guys, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for future Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis content. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day. I wish you guys the best of luck taking down the Crash and the EX3 for this awesome new Critical Threat Turks event. You guys have a wonderful night. Take care and peace.